transgender issues are a much hotter topic now than they were when the new Jewish theater selected Yentl to close its season. The production is brilliant, and the current transgender controversies only add resonance to Leah Napolin's play. It's based on an Isaac Bashevis Singer story about a 19th century Eastern European woman who is so desperate to study Torah and Talmud that she disguises herself as a man so she can enroll at a yeshiva. The play opened on Broadway in 1975. It was followed by a very free film adaptation by Barbara Streisand. The play at New Jewish is revised and presented with music, but it is not at all influenced by the film. In fact, Naplin and her collaborator, Jill Sobuel, are contractually forbidden from competing with the movie, so the current Yentl is billed as a play with music, not as a musical. Naplin wrote the play from a feminist perspective. The second wave woman's movement, she said in an interview, gave women permission to examine the condition of their lives and redefine who they are and what they want to be. Before seeing the play, I thought Yenta was pretending to be a man so she could study the holy books. But as I watched, I began to wonder whether Yentl wanted to study the holy books because being a man wasn't really a pretense. After unmasking herself to Avigdor, her study partner, Yentl says she had the soul of a man and the body of a woman. I'm not suggesting that Singer conceived of Yentl as a transgender individual, but when a keen observer of humanity imagines an evocative character, the implications can go beyond the author's intentions. For me, thinking about Yentl in the light of transgender issues only adds to the poignancy and the urgency of the plea for understanding and tolerance in Naplin's incisive script and Sobule's expressive music. I doubt if I would have thought so hard about Yentl if the new Jewish staging had not been so compelling. Authenticity pours from every aspect of this production. Edward Caulfield's direction, Charlie Mueller's musical direction, Ellen Isom's choreography, Peter and Marjorie Speck's set, Michelle Friedman Seiler's costumes, Peter Jackson's lighting, Amanda Ware's sound, and of course, the acting. Shannara Gabriel's Yentl and Andrew Michael Neiman's Avigdor are spellbinding, but they do not outshine the gem-like supporting performances by Terry Meadows, Taylor Stewart, Peggy Billow, Jennifer Thebe Quinn, Amy Louie, Will Bonfiglio, Brendan Oakes, Luke Steingruby, and Jack Zenger. They all deserve far more detailed praise than I have room to give them. Um, nicely, I like the way you laid out the, what the issues that this brings to us right now. And as you say, it's not really a musical, but it is a play with music, and it's some charming music of various kinds. Let's hear some of it. Hey, thanks for watching. Click here to subscribe and check us out on Facebook. The link is below.